trees are as old as the earth. And people have been cutting trees for lumber for hundreds of years. But protecting lumber from decay and insects first began in the mid-1800s. An early process used mercuric chloride, which was highly toxic. With the growth in the railroads in the 1860s, creosoted ties became available. And by 1890, creosoted timbers were being used in marine pilings. Today, compounds such as pentachlorophenol, ACA, and CCA are in use all over. However, regulation of these chemical applications is fairly recent. And while several regulations, federal, state, and even local ones, apply to the chemicals we are addressing, our focus here is the final rule, which was incorporated into the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act, RECRA, on December 6, 1990. In the final rule, the EPA determined that wastes from wood-preserving processes using pentachlorophenol, creosote, and arsenic chromium in organic preservatives demonstrate risks to human health and the environment and should be listed as hazardous wastes. This means that any wood preserving facility that uses these formulations is now subject to regulation under RECRA. During the rest of this video, we will tour a wood treatment facility to see what the wood treatment regulations mean to the functions involved in this work. We will show you where violations are likeliest to occur and we will answer many questions. The purpose of wood treating is to provide long-term protection from the damaging effects of fungi, insects, and marine borers. By penetrating the wood with preservative solutions, we can preserve its structural integrity, improve its resistance to weathering, water, and ground contact. The first step is to reduce moisture from the wood to allow deeper penetration and retention of the preservative. This is called conditioning or seasoning. There are four ways to accomplish seasoning. Air drying, kiln drying, Bolton drying, and steam conditioning. In air drying, wood is allowed to dry naturally at ambient temperatures and atmospheric pressure. Stacks of wood may be sticked. Shims or sticks of wood are placed between the lumber to allow air to circulate throughout the stack. Depending on the geographic location, the season, and the type of wood, air drying times can vary from weeks to months. Very little wastewater is generated from air drying. Kiln drying may be used to dry wood after treating with inorganic water-based preservatives. Kiln drying is a batch process where wood is placed in kilns or ovens and subjected to high temperatures to accelerate the natural drying process. Kiln dried lumber may be sticked. Bolton drying is usually done with oil borne preservatives. Wood is placed in a wood treating unit or retort. Preservative is added and heated at or above the boiling point of water. The moisture in the wood is converted to steam and driven out of the wood. The vaporized water is condensed and is a source of process wastewater. In steam conditioning, the wood is placed in the retort and heated with steam for several hours. The pressure may be elevated to increase the temperature of the steam. A vacuum is then rapidly created to vaporize the moisture and draw it from the wood. The steam is condensed and is a source of processed wastewater. Now let's take a closer look at the chemical formulations that are subject to regulation. Pentachlorophenol is an oil-based synthetic organic compound made by reacting phenol with chlorine. Formulations are usually 2 to 9 percent pentachlorophenol in organic solvents. The solvents include heavy fuel oils, creosote oils, and light petroleum solvents such as butane, liquefied petroleum gas, alcohols, and methylene chloride. Creosote is also oil-based. It consists of mixtures of heavy residual oils from the distillation of tar or crude petroleum. Most creosote used for wood preserving is from coal-based tars. Formulations may consist of pure creosote or mixtures of creosote blended with petroleum oils and coal tar. Inorganic formulations consist of arsenical and chromate salts dissolved in water. 
Over 80% of wood treaters use chromated copper arsenate, CCA, diluted to between 0.9 and 8% in water. Other inorganic formulations consisting of copper arsenate and chromate compounds are also used, but not as frequently. Application of these formulations is done in a retort. The retort is a closed vessel where a vacuum or pressure may be applied. The construction is usually a horizontal tank where the ends can be opened to facilitate charging and removing the wood. These units require routine cleaning. After the wood has been treated, the excess formulation is removed from the retort and collected for recovery. After treatment, the wood is transferred to a drip pad where excess formulation is also collected and may be recovered. Recovery systems may consist of oil water separators to remove water from oil-based formulations or use filters to remove dirt, sawdust, and other matter that becomes entrained in used formulation. Under RECRA's existing regulations, any hazardous waste generated that meets the definition of a listed waste or a characteristic waste is subject to regulation. Characteristic wastes are residuals with chemical characteristics that meet specific numerical parameters that make them hazardous. These are enumerated on the D list. Listed means residuals only need to meet the listed description of the definition to be hazardous. This description does not rely on the presence and concentration of specific chemicals. While other waste codes, such as K001, do apply to wood treatment facilities, our focus here is only on the new codes. The definitions of listed hazardous wastes that were added in the final rule cover F032, F034, and F035. These numbers cover waste waters, process residuals, preservative drippage, and spent formulations from the wood preserving processes using chlorophenolic formulations, creosote formulations, and inorganic preservatives containing arsenic or chromium, respectively. Regulated process wastewater is limited to those wastewaters that have come into direct contact with the preservative formulation or treated wood. In most cases, non-contact cooling water or boiler blowdown would not be regulated. So which processes are likely to involve wastewater coming into direct contact with preservative formulation? There are several. First, there's conditioning. Bolton and steam conditioning generate the most wastewater, anywhere from half a gallon to nine gallons of water per cubic foot of wood.